Hello, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Preston Holder, and I'm a sales engineer for Mirapath. The goal of today's recording is to show you a little bit about the Avigilon surveillance system. So what I'm going to show you today is we're going to log in to the Avigilon demo system. We're going to navigate the window panes a little bit, and then I'm going to show you some of the app recording features. But this is a basic tutorial of what the Avigilon system can do kind of right out of the gate, not really jump, jumping in very deep into it, just kind of saying a 50,000 foot overview and just kind of giving an overview of the system. So when I first go to log into the system, you'll see that I have a couple different options over here. These are all the sites that, I've, um, that I have the availability to log into. So if you have a couple different sites, they'll all be up here. You can log into them all at once or you can select them individually. Um, put in the password here and the login. Keep in mind that during this presentation, um, this is all going to be done remotely. So I'm sitting on my laptop here that's running the software, the client software, the Vigilant client software, that's connecting to a server in, this is actually in Canada. So what you're seeing, and actually I only have one bar of access here, so this is going to be a testament on how good the actual software is at pulling these cameras up. So if I bring over <clears throat> this little pane on the left side, it's going to show you exactly kind of your camera layout. So if I log into my system, I'm going to see all my different options here. So if I have the east parking lot, I can click on that, and that's going to give me the cameras in there. If I go to the west pipe yard, that's going to give me the cameras in there. So let's say I want to go to the north side of the building, and I'm going to pull up maybe this camera. I quickly and simply just drag it over. Now, actually, I have some video on here, which is good. I can click there, and I can zoom in a little bit more. Keep in mind that this is only a 3-megapixel camera. So in this situation, if we really wanted to see this, and we wanted to see all this clearly, say I wanted to see this guy's face super clear, I would put on a much higher megapixel camera. Now, one of the beauties of a Vigilon is that they go all the way up to a 30-megapixel camera. Nobody else can do that right now. Um, and nobody else has been able to do that for a while. So let me show you what a 16 megapixel camera would look like. It's going to take a minute to bring it up, of course. Remember, we're in Canada. I've got one tiny little bar here, and this is all live recording. So this is a 16 megapixel camera. The nice thing about this camera is that I, I can click here. Now it's going to take a minute, but what's going to happen is it's going to start to clear up that picture. right? This is a little bit more like what you would see on a TV show, CSI, right? enhanced, enhanced. Really what we're doing is we're taking a 16 megapixel camera and we have all this data and when you zoom in we're only going to be able to pull that information out. So here's something else that we can do with the system that I think is pretty cool. So I can change my divisions here and I can copy these cameras down. Now the reason for doing this is I can now utilize this 16 megapixel camera as if it were a bunch of individual cameras. So this is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of money, say out in your parking lots, where normally it might cost you, say, fifty thousand dollars to put in six cameras. Right? You got to run, you got to dig trenches, you got to run cables, you got to run power. This camera is one camera. You can sit on the edge of your building, so all the wiring is local. You can power it local to your building, and you can get the whole parking lot. Right? Keep in mind that this is all the same camera, but I've been able to break it up. Now, say I wanted to go into exact rec the, the pre-recorded video on this. If I hit this little button right here, it's going to take every one of these window panes into recorded video. Here's my timeline bar. And now what I can do is I can kind of scrub the video and see what's going on. I can pause it. I can hit the play button and make them all play. But really, the sweetness of the system and really where it stands out is being able to scrub this video and being able to pull up the, these cameras at any time. Right? And keep in mind, again, I have a very, very small limited connection right now, and we're still performing pretty well. So if I want to get rid of these, I can go back in here, move those. Um, if I want to pull over another camera, I can. Let's go back into live mode here, and then let me pull up a PTZ camera and show you how we can move cameras around. So I have a couple different ways of doing it. The traditional way, traditional way of moving a PTZ camera around would be something similar to this. You're holding on one side, 
you kind of slowly go. The further you go, the faster it gets. Um, that's a traditional way of doing PTZ control, pan, tilt, zoom movement. What a Vigilon has done is they've also given us the ability to click, and wherever we click, the camera's going to center, which is a really nice feature. Also, what I can do is I can hold, click and hold and say, you know what, I want to see this. And it's going to zoom into that location and go right to where I need it. So this is a very, very easy way of using a PTZ camera. If you're old school and you like to use the dragon move air, uh, method, that's there. And then they have some newer school type methods of being able to click and also drag around a box. Now, say we wanted to zoom back out, we can right click, click zoom out full, and here we go. Again, I keep stressing this, but keep in mind, we're I'm in Fresno, California, and this system that we're looking at right now, this video, is in Vancouver, Canada. So here's some other cool things that we can do with it. I can bring up a map that shows our cameras. So if I go over here to Richmond, I can click on that. I can say, if I was saying like a view like this, I could click here, and it would start to display these cameras that I have and in these areas that we're looking at. Okay, so we can have maps up there. Another cool feature that we have that Vision One allows us to do is that I can bring in web pages. So for instance, it's zero degrees right now in uh, Vancouver, BC, which is exactly where these cameras are. So I could do something like this. This could be, say, CNN. This could be Weather Channel, like it is on this one. It could be a lot of different things. But again, the ease of being able to bring this in. It could be your access control area. Maybe you want to have all your access control pop up here as the people come through. We could do that as well. Now, going through the, um, the last little part here, if I wanted to, say, do some recorded searching, if I come up here to this plus button and then go to search, I have a bunch of different options of searching that I can do here. So if I come down here, say, to motion, and I want to see any motion that has happened on this camera, all I have to do is highlight the area, and then hit, or and then find my searching area, which is this. This is my before and my after. Again, you can change it here, and you're from and to, and that's all that these show. I'll hit search, and then what it's going to do is it's going to go through this area, and it's going to pop up all the times that it saw motion. There's a person. There's some more movement going on, right? So anytime I saw motion. Now keep in mind, see how many different results that I have here. This is a lot of results. Um, so maybe this might not be the best search for this, right? So that's okay. We have another searching option. If I hit the plus button here and then I go to thumbnails, if I'm looking for something in particular, say I wanted to see whatever car parked in this parking spot. Because let's say I'm coming into work and I've noticed this car's been here for five days, right? What I can do is I can go through and I can set my time to where let's just go back over the past, say, 14 hours. Let's see if anybody, who's parked there? When do they get there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, might not have had anybody there over the past 14 hours. Let's go ahead and redo that search. Let's go thumbnails. And we'll go back to this spot. Instead of saying the last 14 hours, let's say in the last two days, 19 hours. Perfect. So I'm going from right to left, read it just like a book. Now, these are medium thumbnails. Now, if I click small thumbnails, it's going to bring up some more, which means it's going to break that timeline down even more. So if I'm looking in here, left to right, no car, no car, no car, no car. Oh, there's a car. So now I'm going to double click on this. And what that's going to do is now I'm just going to read it like a book again. When does a car appear in the scene? There it does. So I'll double click on that scene. And I'll keep doing this until I get to what I feel might be far enough, which this looks like it's definitely far enough. I can click here, and then I can click on Open and View. And now I can hit the Play button. And now I've just effectively searched 
what was that, almost three days of video, and I did it in about 25, 30 seconds. So again, you can do it and see what comes into the area. I can highlight the car and say, when does this car leave? And then again, you're not going to look on the left-hand side to see when the car appears. You're going to look on the right-hand side, right, left to right, to see when the car disappears, and then you'll click on that. Okay? So those are the two searching features. This is a quick little overview of the Vigilon system.